Greetings and welcome to Top Song, the show where we come together and give you our unasked for top songs by any given artist. With me today, the doogie to my hauser, Ed. <laughs> Fred Savage's head of security, Jason. <laughs> and the guy who once got into a bar fight with Howie Mandel, Joe. <laughs> Howie, I'm coming for you. Did, did you, you catch that Red head Savage head. link there? You know, Little Monsters? That's right. God, what a great movie. <laughs> that was one of those I just rented a lot when I was a child. Yep, never owned it. Yeah, me either. Um, all right, housekeeping. Subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, please, please do that for us, Oddballs. I know you're watching it. Hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Um, also, give us a good old-fashioned like while you're there. And if you don't like the Wonder Years and you don't like Bouncing Souls... You can always sign up for our Patreon and choose whichever artist you want us to talk about. We will even read your list with us. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to uh, Sofa King Rad. Yarbles. He is uh, he is part of our Patreon, and he's lonely. He needs he needs you there with him. He's very lonely. <laughs> he's the best main tank in Overwatch, so That's you right. need to carry. Just holler for him. Um, we're also on Discord. We're very active there, um, so please come and join us. Join the conversation. Uh, my dogs want to go in and out during this intro. Um, so well, at least you're right there by the door. My dog's eventually going to want to come in. I'm going to have to get up and let him in at some point. All right, move your tail. Um, so come and join us at Discord. Come show off your vinyl collection. Um, we've got video games there. We've got eight tracks going on. We've got all kinds of fun stuff. Come play the fork knife with us. That's right. Um, so this is Top Songs. You know how it goes. We give you our top songs. Um, this week it is The Wonder Years. Um, hopefully you have seen our rant and rank and uh, how much we have gushed over them, at least Jason and I, um, Ed also a little bit, and <laughs> uh, also some with that, so we're going to uh, roll with that. We're going to let Jason go and let his dog in, and we're going to talk a little bit about, um, so Ed, what I had problems with getting my top five songs, I know Jason will probably attest to this, is I like these as albums. I like how they fit yeah. into the album. So it was really hard for me to like dissect one and pull it out and say, this is my favorite song, when it was so like, this is part of that album. This is the references they're making. Well, that's, that's, the, sign of, that's the sign of a good songwriter, though, whenever you do yeah. stuff like that. It's like the Mona Lisa, man. You can't just say, oh, look, it's just the arm of the Mona Lisa. You know, like you got to see the whole thing yeah. for it to work. Yeah. That's art. You, know? you got to have so, the unibrow yeah. of the Mona Lisa. Shout out my unibrow folks. Um, Jason, I was just saying why you... hell did I walk back into? <laughs> right time. That's right. Uh, Jason, I was just saying how difficult it was for me to pick top songs out of this because I'm, I'm this, these are albums to me. These are full, complete albums. And it's hard to like dissect one out of it. Oh, there's a direct link on two of mine, so <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> um, so, Ed, let's start off with your number five. I just realized I haven't ranked my songs. I just picked five of them. So we gotta, we're doing that while you're going. Okay. Um, well, I didn't give this album much love, but I did like the song um, Cardinals. Um, I need to dive a little bit more into from uh, No Closer to Heaven. Um, I think uh, Caught Between the Lies, You've Been Fed, and the War in Your Bloodstream, I would have been there when you needed a friend. I was off on my own again. Like, I, I just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's it's a good tune. I like the lyrics to it. Um, again, it seems to to be referencing a lot of his uh, his issues, and um, but uh, I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pick that as number five. All right. And nobody on this call is as good as Soupy. You'd have to hear him sing these lyrics. We read off these lyrics, oh, and we're tone yeah. deaf and we're horrible. But the way he sings some of these things. Whew, I don't understand. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of feeling. There's a lot of feeling behind it. Yeah, a yes. lot of emotion. Um, Jason, give me your number five. My number five is actually not technically on the album, but it's me versus the highway. Hmm. Um, this one again, it leads into the. I mean, it's it's kind of like the bridge between suburbia and the greatest generation, but. The lyrics are like, I watched the highway lines unwind, thought about where I could go and who I would leave behind. I stayed anchored there or here because only I could find a way to make a year I hated seem nostalgic. That line is so good because I've got a few years where, I mean, Joe and I were just talking about one 
couple of days ago. It's like, oh man, that was such a horrible time. Things were so bad, blah, blah, blah. But you're still nostalgic about it. Um, I've been having the car crash dreams. Not sure if they mean anything, but it keeps me out of the driver's seat. It's just a really good song. And I know it, it's a B-side, but you should definitely check it out. I was hoping somebody picked some a B-side from them um, or something from the deluxe. I, I went main albums, but I was really hoping we'd see a little of that. Um, my number five is Washington Square Park uh, off of Upsides. Um, I think this is like the one where I don't need to tell you where they're from, but we're going to do it just for your benefit. Um, so Washington Square Park, uh, you know, I'm looking for the upsides of these panic attack nights. Um, we mentioned that in the uh, R&R, but the, having that come from, you know, be the title of the album come from that, um, the Leaving a Lot of Blood in California, and talking about how he was younger and restless back then. Um, just great lines. It's a great uh, uh, song. It surprised me that it wasn't the closer off that album, uh, but just an amazing song. Starting to think you're the California guy, Joe. Maybe we need to give you a California quiz. <laughs> the, the reason I'm referencing yes. it so much is for our, our friend Ed. I thought he'd pick more of this, pick more of it up. <laughs> yeah, again, I got to give some of these some another listen. That's right. Yeah. Um, Jason, give us number four. My number four ties into my number five, and it is passing through a screen door. Um, I've kind of already talked about this one a lot in the other video, but, you know, the line, well, the Highway 1 just kind of, it suckered me, and I was like, whoa, he's talking about that other song. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've already talked about this one in great lengths. You know, I don't want my children growing up to be anything like me. Such a great line. It's sad, but yeah, this is when this album or when this song, because this is the first single I think came out. Like I called Cowboy and said, "Oh, did you hear the new one of yours?" And we're like, "Oh my God, this is amazing!" Oh, oh, oh. so yeah, that's. That's a great song. Absolutely. Uh, my number four is My Last Semester off the Upsides. Um, this has made it into my, like, uh, favorites mix. And I heard it, and I was like, what is this song? Um, and it was before we started. It was, like, four or five days before we actually started this uh, um, project for the Wonder Years. Um, I was still off the... Uh, Soundgarden, if you haven't seen our Soundgarden video, you're in for a treat. Uh, but, so, uh, this came home while I was kind of taking the breather and not having to listen to it for uh, the channel. And I was like, what is this song? This is badass. And really, really got into it. So, I really like the song. Um, it really kind of uh, uh, fits into, uh, as Ed said in our Rant Rank, the, the way that we grew up uh, in kind of a smaller town, in, in a suburban uh, atmosphere. And it was like these people were following us around. Um, you know, talking about people with tribal tattoos and uh, homophobic bullshit. Uh, it was, it's so damn funny. tribal tattoos. <laughs> yeah. And the line, I don't, and I don't make sense to anyone but my best friends. Uh, you know, I'm sure everyone feels like that, but that was something that uh, growing up, being uh, someone who thought, or, or you know, wasn't exactly in the mainstream of thought in our small towns, uh, that one really hit me. Uh, thinking back into the past. I don't know. You still don't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Ed, you're my new best friend. Congratulations. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, um, Ed, number four. I'm going to go with Cigarettes and Saints for this one. That, that's a really good song. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I want to point another way that this guy just hits it out of the park by growing up in suburbia in a small town is it's also the religious factor of it it's not it's not it's not just the hanging out with friends but he has in a few songs he he puts in there subtly <laughs> sometimes about Ooh. um i <laughs> know yeah, i'm not i'm joking but uh he talks about it you know he and it's true like in a small town growing up suburbia you, you know you have the small churches and, and, uh, and you know the people the judgy people and you know it's just it's part of it um and I think he, he talks about it. And I think we talked about it in the video that also the, the hypocritical a aspect of this at, at times, you know. And, and his point of view, uh, 
where he grew up apparently you know it's a it's a common thing and from growing up in a small town i can see how that's relatable too so that's what i'm thinking that one one day i'll tell you the story about how me and burnham were smoking cigarettes next to the high school and we almost got locked into the church next to it they wouldn't let us leave (laughs) (laughs) oh lord I gotta ask, hear that one. Ask Burnham about it. <laughs> um, oh, they I said know. we need a Jesus. Well, was it the, the real Jesus or like a chocolate Jesus or a chocolate Jesus? Yeah, that was a weird church. Jesus? Um, <laughs> I've seen oh, it all. Um, okay, so my number three is local man ruins everything off of uh, suburbia. Um. <laughs> I love the reference back to the uh, the fountains. The fountain was off. Of Throw back to Logan Circle because of how uh, you know it changed for him during Logan Circle. Being like, man, everything the fountain was on, and you know, I felt better. Well, now the fountain's off, and we don't. You know, it's kind of but again the way he sings it. The fountain was off. This is the third. And the music just so good. Uh, the I try so hard to be some great white hope, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm going to be that I'm going to end up shaking in bed alone. Uh, and then obviously, I mean, we've said it multiple times but the uh, it's about not letting sadness win it's such a powerful line um, that comes from it so that, that's why I ended up my number three Ed give us yours all of my friends are in cover bands or bar bands a bar band sorry so, well yeah uh, bar band sorry that, I can <laughs> too, relate too to much in real life <laughs> yeah way yeah. too much it's one or the other when I, the way I grew up they could be but, bar yeah, bands that play covers sometimes okay. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but it's it's uh, that that's another song that hits home. I mean, uh, uh, listening to it, totally relate to it, and it's uh, another one. Also, you can see their humor, which which is not lost. I mean, the guy he uh, he writes some pretty deep cutting stuff, but sometimes you see that flare of that first un, un, unspoken album. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun song. Maybe this is a little higher to, to be putting it on, but I, I just thought it was a uh, like a like a flare or something fun, you know, and and the more deeper stuff. So nice. What you got, Jason? My number three is off of the hum goes on forever, and it's low tide. Um. This album, oh, what happened there? Um, this <laughs> album, well, inside baseball. They released like five singles off of it before it came out, and just every one they put out just got better and better. And I've already talked about this song like in great depth on the other video, but so I guess I'll talk about the music on this. And the music was it's fantastic. It changes. What's the word like, like melody like so many times that it, it it still sounds like the wonder years but it's definitely an elevation of music compared to the previous work and the lyrics are just fantastic i mean they, it's a phenomenal song yeah. um ed give us number two and the end i oh the way that i pick these is the uh relatableness and and there are some songs like you guys were speaking of that i need to dive into some more so these are the ones that are surface level relatable so Mm -hmm. i'm sure there's more that i have to dig but suburbia the whole um line about the town being dead and and you know and it is it's just it's it's, it i mean it it's perfect like it's just the way he talks about um you know, every business on Main Street collapsed except for Morgan's mom's place. You know, that, that that's that is so relatable. And you know, growing up where we did, um, I remember when Walmart was trying to build uh, a spot in I think Fairhope, and they were like, "Nah, bro, like you know, you're gonna have to build it like way down." <laughs> you know what I mean? And I didn't get it at first, but you know, now you're older, you're like, "Oh, that's why they did it." But anyways, totally relatable. I think, especially for small towns. Um, but yeah, I love the song. It's a good one. Good, good lyrics and good music behind it. Jason? 
All right, my I purposely skipped this one in the other video, so because I knew I was going to want to talk about it, and we were probably running long in that one. But it is I want it so badly to be. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> I want it so badly to be brave. Um, I say um a lot. I know it's watching your previous videos. <laughs> So this song is about, again, it's off No Closer to Heaven. Um, it's about that friend that he couldn't save, and he paints a picture, and I might have to read every lyric on this song, so you'll have to bear with me. But it tells a story, and you can picture it. <clears throat> well, I cut and opened my palm and held it out to you. You did the same with your old army surplus blade. My blood's never as warm as I expected. You grabbed my hand, adorned it in wildfire or war paint. You made yellows out of marigolds. You made purples out of camellias we charged headfirst in the woods with bows and arrows drawn crudely fashioned sticks and rubber bands and spray paint we swore ourselves protectors from all the evil in the world you weren't born my brother but you're gonna die that way we ran alone in the falling snow barefoot down wickles road i watched the bruises grow strangely beautiful purple and yellow you said don't take me home your father came in angry like a thunderstorm he tossed your room from room he tossed you room from room and I watched the color draining from your face. Fault lines started forming underneath all of your floorboards. We sat terrified, waiting on an earthquake. I watched you put on a brave face. I wanted so badly to be brave. They kicked you out to teach you what a man is. I don't think I'll ever know what that means. They'll put a gun into your hand and call you weak until you're violent. Don't believe it. They're hateful because they're empty. We've got a chance to break the cycle. We could be the heroes we always said we'd be, but don't take me home. It's such a sad song about a childhood friend who is going through some bad stuff at the hands of their parents. And it's just a phenomenal song. You'd have to hear it, which is why I'm putting it on this. Go check out the playlist. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it, amazing song. Uh, it, it, it almost made it to my list. Uh, it reminds me of people I knew when I was a kid. Um, my number two is I uh, is Coffee Eyes. That almost made it to my list. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy that song too. Yeah, um, and we talked about a lot about you know uh, our experience with uh, uh, a diner, a Waffle House, and we had a Miss Patty. Uh, go listen to Rant and Rank. We we talked a little bit. Shout out Miss Patty. I doubt you'll ever watch this, but um, man, what what a lot of fun we had with her. And uh, that song just brings it right back for me. Oh, Miss Patty was amazing. <laughs> I'm uh, sure some people watching this will even know yeah. who we're talking about. And uh, shout out to all the servers and cooks out there working at Waffle House. That's right. You guys keep the world twirling. I mean, if you don't, I'll, I'll say it, Joey. Like this is this one of the bands. You just gotta fucking you gotta say the lyrics. Two dollars twenty seven cents, January seventeenth, two thousand six. Here at a diner with my friends, talking about how the year went. A few years later, I walked in. Patty knew my drink and asked where the hell we've been. I mean, that's just... Oh, it's so good. It's good. Uh, this was the place to call home. Um, so, great great uh, uh, song. A lot of nostalgia, a lot of meaning for me. As Ed said, uh, you know, a lot of these have personal meanings. Um, it's like this man was following us around. Uh, <laughs> Jason, give us number one. My number one... <laughs> And I've noticed I've done this with a couple of these top songs that we've uh, recorded. But it's usually the first song I hear from them. It came out swinging. Uh, it's a great opener. Yeah, I love that song. That song is so good. I wish I could find that piano part. Um, if you, you have the uh, piano part out there, YouTube world, post in the comments or Discord for us. I've already talked a little bit about this one, the other one, because it's so good. But the the best part, I think, is the build up where he like says, "I came out swinging, um, caked it still, beer and sweat, and these half lit fluorescents." Sorry, my cat's being a. But he he like says the same line over and over, and he gets louder and louder until he's like screaming it, and it's so good. That's how you open an album. I mean, they come out swinging. 
and the the music video. It's got Hank the Pigeon. It's got this little girl and a ghost like running around playing pranks. All their videos are really good. I haven't watched any of their videos yet. I need to. Uh, that was you need to I'm check out the, videos. especially the suburbia ones. They're really good. <laughs> they all have Hank the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one is uh, I just want to sell out my funeral. It's cheating a little bit for this to be my number one because it takes a lot of the great lines off of Greatest Generation and puts it at the end of the song. Um, and I love references. Um, I love people referencing songs within their songs. Um, so it's it's uh, it's really good. But we talked about it in our other video, as we say, but uh, the end of it saying we all want to be great men um, and there's nothing romantic about it. I just want to know I did all that I could with what I was given. Um, so, so good. What a, what a great closing track for that album. Uh, Ed, give me number one. My life is a duck. <laughs> <laughs> My life is a pigeon. Is uh, I think it's the most memorable song. It has the hook from the chorus. It's fantastic. Very well written. It, it will be stuck in your head if you have never heard them before. I would suggest this song first. Um, I think it's uh, it's a good the whole out the whole album is great. But I think uh, this song out of the whole album should have been. The, the single for it because it's just a it is a good pop pop punk song and um, and I like it so and the chorus is catchy it might have been a single I don't sure. think so because they made videos for uh, living room song and don't let me cave in so I didn't see it on there maybe they do have one I just I'm not um, maybe not I don't know but it's just such a good song. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't have. I mean, like it, I mean it's just catchy. You know, you figure that'd be the one that they put out there. But I mean, the whole album could have been a single, almost. Yeah, that's true too. I just, I just think, I just think that that's the, that's my favorite top one of this album. Awesome. All right. Well, we have a new segment today, um, and it's called the Wonder Your Quiz for Jason and Ed. And they're wait, really wait, wait. Before you get into that crap, we don't have a single crossover, do we? I don't think we do. Well, and nobody picked Dismantling Summer because I still wanted to talk about that song, but oh well. <laughs> was the was all my friends are in bar bands? Was that was that the only happy song? Not happy, but like, <laughs> depressing song <laughs> picked. Yeah, I'm starting to think Ed's right. Yeah. Maybe you and I just like bad music. You know, I wanted so badly to be brave. It's very depressing. Um, yeah. Man, there's a lot of depressing things running around here. Cigarettes and Saints. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> we'll get we'll do the white stripes next week. We'll be happy. That's right. Yes. Um, all right, new segment. Rods, Rob, baby. So, Ed, Jason, are you ready for your uh, white or uh, white stripes? Your Wonder Years quiz. Bring it on. Excellent. It's another. As referenced in the Paris of Nowhere, who is Saint Nick Foles? Ed, you're supposed to be my. That, this is supposed to be your question. You see how he just comes up. Oh, Ed, you should have known this. Yeah. What the hell. So he was the he's Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh. Ah. Oh yeah, football. Okay. Woo. All right. So <laughs> number one, man. So I don't have a big X here, but we can do that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. In the song "My Geraldine Lies Over to Delaware," he referenced being uh, pumping his own gas again. In what two U.S. states is it technically illegal to pump your own gas? Joe? <laughs> Dude, is there like a curve on this quiz? Oh, yeah, what the <laughs> hell is this? I don't know where you can't pump your gas in the U.S.? Come on. No. New Jersey, no. which is what he was singing about, and Oregon. Because, yeah, I've been to both of those recently. <laughs> you right. didn't know that shit. I knew New Jersey. I didn't know Oregon. Um, here's, we're going to get a little though. closer. This will be a little closer to what y'all... What year did Wonder Years TV show start? 1989? 80, 80, 82. 88. So we're close 82. on 82. Ah. 82. I was going to say 88. <laughs> I was throwing a number out there. I have no idea. But yeah. what because year... Kevin, Kevin Arnold was the same age as me. Yeah. Uh, what year did the reboot start? What reboot? Is it a reboot? Yeah. Wonder Years reboot. Boy Meets World oh. is not a Wonder Years reboot. No, Joe. it's not. Dude, oh, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, do with, not uh, play with my emotions. 
2021. Yeah, there's a. It's not. It's a. It's got um, the guy that plays in Psych. Um. Gus from Psych is the dad. It's an African American family. We watched the first couple of episodes. It's actually decent. What happened at the end? The last show of the Wonder Years. Yeah, Joe. Tell what what happened at the end of the last episode of Wonder Years. So what they did was they they copied an older uh, sitcom, um, which was kind of unique, you think, at that time. Uh, but it was like the Bob Newhart show. He woke up from a dream. Nope. No. Uh, <laughs> I just made all that up. I knew it wasn't right. The the dad. Well, I'm not gonna. I don't know if I was watching. Spoilers, it, please. Spoilers from here. So it was. Sad. It, was <laughs> it it made me sad and angry. At the same time, sad because of the dad, what happens to the dad. I love the dad in that show and angry because after watching that thing over and over again, you expect certain people to become but, more than friends. And then they don't. And, okay. But, oh, when it was, I, 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 I was like, and then I met Winnie Cooper at the airport with her new husband. But it fuck it fits. That's real life. I mean, because I no, had a girlfriend. It does not. I had a girlfriend at the time while we were watching that show, and I'm not married to her now. Mm. So I mean, was she Winnie Cooper? But if you're you're not you're not. I did not I did not spend time watching. Yeah, Cooper yeah, she was Winnie Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So no, uh, no, no, no. All right, all right. Who who is the uh, who does the narration for the Wonder Years, Joe? Oh, uh, it is. Quit googling. That's a great question. I ain't googling. It was uh, I should know. It isn't Fred Savage. We're going Fred Savage. It's not him, but no, because he was a child. No. <laughs> it's Daniel Stern from uh, Home Alone. Marv. Did he play Kevin? He played older Kevin. He did the narration. <laughs> <laughs> what were the names? I'll give you a simple. What was the names of of Kevin's? Siblings. Uh, oh, that's tough. No I idea. can't remember that. Wayne and Karen. Oh, uh, uh, that's right. I need to watch this show again. But this has been a great band to look into, guys. Seriously, like I'm, I am looking forward to digging more into them. Yes, it's always nice to have a quiz. It's topical. That's right. Pete and Pete. That was the name, siblings' names. All right. Um. So that's there you show. have it. There's our top songs by the. Now, I'm not trying to cut the tension here. Just. <laughs> Bring you it down. You didn't a bring bit. a quiz today. Hey, look, Ed. no wonder years. This hey, has been I, the most peaceful that is fucking discography we've ever had. We gotta we have, have some strife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we just wait till next week uh, with the white stripes because then you get uh, a quiz about things with white stripes. And, uh, yeah, it. I think I think wait. you and Ed's gonna get into it next week. <laughs> wait, you gotta bring some candy into the conversation. Though. Oh, I didn't bring any candy. That's a great. I should have looked that up. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed our uh, top songs for the Wonder Years. If you think we got it wrong, please let us know in the comments below or in our Discord. Uh, if you knew the answers to those questions, just say I knew the answers to those questions, and I can't believe no one knew Nick Foles. Ed, Nick Foles, come on. Uh, remember yeah. <laughs> to like, share, subscribe, and tell a zookeeper, why don't you? I mean, they get to hang out <laughs> with animals all day, which, which should be amazing, but what do they do when they come home at night? Do you ever think of that? Do you ever think of these people? Why are, why are you being so selfish and not telling a zookeeper about your favorite YouTubers? Shame on you. So go tell them right now. They'll thank you for it. Until we see you next time, stay safe, make good decisions.